Okay, so last week, this was one of the concepts we talked about. Now, like you were saying, we actually only talked about two concepts yeah, last yeah. week, but the one, the dilution, is used in like three or four different ways. Yeah. And this here just displays about two different ways that dilution is used in just this single problem. So here we have a blood sample that exceeds the limit. We tried to test it with a meter. It exceeds the limits of a blood glucose meter. Most meters have a 800 milligrams per deciliter limit. So for this one, we took a sample of 20 microliters of blood and diluted it with 40 microliters of saline, of sterile water. So our first step that we have to figure out is we have to figure out what is the dilution that is created here. Is it 20 in 40? No, it's not. It's not 20 in 40. Remember, a dilution is always the serum or the concentrate over the total. So the serum is the 20 microliters. The total, however, is 60, 40 plus 20. So the microliters cancel out, and this is 20 over 60, or a 1 in 3 dilution. Now that information is required to convert our reading back to a true level. We have that 1 in 3 dilution, which is going to be the ratio of our diluted reading to the true reading. To figure out where to put the numbers, we just use some common sense. The diluted reading is 310. Is the true reading going to be larger than that or smaller than that? Larger. So the larger number here between 1 and 3 is on the bottom. So the larger number is going to go on bottom. That missing number has to be on bottom. The 310 has to go on top. It's the smaller of the two numbers. So now I'll cross multiply and divide. 3 times 310 is 930. Divided by 1 is 930 milligrams per deciliter. So this particular patient has a blood glucose level of 930 milligrams per deciliter. So there was two applications of the di dilution here. One was finding out what is the dilution, finding the dilution itself of the serum or the concentrate in this case to the saline to the total to get the actual dilution ratio. And then using that dilution ratio to adjust a diluted reading to a concentrated reading, an actual reading. Another application of that dilution ratio is to adjust the concentration of a solution. So rather than having a pure serum like we did here, blood is a pure serum, it's a, a substance, or a pure medication, which would be another a serum, um, we have a concentrate. In other words, a concentrate means it's already diluted some, we're going to dilute it further through another dilution. So we might have a 64% solution. And we want it to be a 16% solution. And we went through all the steps of the dilution to do this. Remember we talked about, you know, the 64% and the volume and all that stuff. The dilution necessary to go from a 64% solution to a 16% solution is just found by taking the new percent, or the new concentration, over the old or the original concentration. So for this one, the new concentration is going to be 16%. The old concentration is 64%. This is going to give us a 1 in 4 dilution. So that is a second application of a dilution, is to figure out, to get from 1% of a solution to another, what dilution do we have to take? We might have three hundred milliliters of a thirty six percent solution. We add now 
900 milliliters of neutral solution or sterile water to it. Find the new concentration. Well, the dilution, remember, the dilution itself is the concentrate or the higher concentrated solution over the total. So how much of the concentrate or the higher concentrated solution do we have here? 300 milliliters of the 36%. What is the total volume after we dilute it? So again, we added 900 milliliters to the original 300 milliliters. So we have 900 plus 300 milliliters. So the milliliters cancel out. This is 300 over 1,200, which are reduced. We can divide that down to a 1 and 4. Perfect. Now that we know it's a 1 in 4 dilution, we can figure out our percent. The 36% is the old, the original concentration. The diluted concentration is going to be smaller, so the smaller number will be on top. So the 36% goes on bottom. And we will cross, multiply, and divide. 1 times 36 is 36, divided by the 4, gives us 9%. So after adding the 900 milliliters of NS, that solution is now diluted down to 9%. So we can do all of that with the dilutions. But there was a shortcut that we learned in the last half hour last week that speeds this up a little bit, rather than going through all the different steps of the different forms of the dilution to find that new concentration. This new formula just took into account that the, the amount of substance, the amount of our serum before dilution is equal to the amount of the serum after the dilution, as long as all that we're adding is some sort of neutral solution or saline or sterile water or whatever word you want to use for it. And the amount of serum in a solution is the concentration of the solution times the volume of the solution. So that gave us the formula that the concentration, the initial concentration, or the first concentration, C1 times the first volume, V1, has to equal the final, or the second concentration, C2, times the volume, V2. So for the example we just did up above, our original concentration was 36%. Now, we, we discussed this. We can either make that 0.36 or we can leave it as just 36. It doesn't matter as long as we do the same thing on the other side. And that's going to be multiplied by the original volume there was 300 milliliters. So that tells us our volume here is going to be in milliliters because our original volume is in milliliters. And we're looking for the concentration after. The volume after is the 300 milliliters plus the 900 milliliters. So 3,600 times three, or 36 times 300 is what? 10,800, I believe. Equals C2 times 300 plus 900 is 1,200. And we divide by the 1,200. C2 equals 9. So that's 9%. I prefer to leave my concentrations as percents, like this 36. That way when I get my concentration, my answer, it's already a percent. I don't have to move decimal points. So let's do another example of this.
how much normal saline needs to be added to 120 milliliters of 48% solution to create an 8% solution. I want you to take a look at that in your notes for a second. See if you can figure that out. I'll give you a minute to work on it, and then we'll go through it. So our original concentration is 48%. What's our original volume? 120, and I'm just going to record milliliters, so I know that my mill milliliters on the other side. On the other side, do I know either the, vo the concentration or the volume? I know the concentration is 8, so that means I must be looking for the volume. So I'm going to multiply the 48 times the 120 So 5760 equals 8 times V2. Then I have to divide by 8. That gives me 720 equals V2. So is that the answer? 720 milliliters? Is that the answer to the question? No. That'll be the volume of the 8% solution. But I didn't. I wasn't asked the volume. I was asked how much saline needs to be added to that. We had 120 milliliters to get to 720. We are adding 600 milliliters of saline. Does that make sense? So that is the one thing we do have to be careful of with that formula is. It doesn't give us the amount of saline to add. It gives us the final volume. So if we're looking at that saline that's added, we have to do some subtraction. The other side of that that we have to be careful of, let's say we have 180 milliliters of 30% solution. Find the concentration after we add seven hundred and twenty milliliters of saline. So again, I'm going to give you guys a second. See if we can get that one to work. So again, we have the initial concentration and volume, so we have the 30% and 180 milliliters. On the other side, we're looking for the concentration. The volume is not 720. Yeah, 720 plus 180. We added 720 milliliters of saline. So 720 plus the original 180 is 900 milliliters. So 30 times 180 is 5,400. So C1 times 900. We're going to divide by 900. So C, it must be C2, not C1. Sorry, C2. Our second concentration is 6. So 6% 6 is the new concentration. Any questions on those? So we've talked about the concentrations. Let's actually look at defining the concentrations a little bit more. There are actually three different types of concentration. Now, all of these we have to be very careful of. Um, we have things that are additive and things that are not additive. Um, from a physics and chemistry standpoint, volume is not additive. What does that mean? 
That means it is very possible to take 20 milliliters of alcohol, of rubbing alcohol, and add it to 80 milliliters of distilled water. And you would think we're going to get 100 milliliters. Guess what? We get a little bit shy of 90, 89, 88 milliliters. Volume is not added yet. The reason being is particles in, a, in, an, in any substance are not tight together. This is why salt will dissolve in water. Even in water, the particles have some space between them. So when we add salt to water, those grains of salt actually squeeze into the space between the particles of water. That's, that's how salt dissolves in water. And that's why that you keep adding salt to the water. Eventually it stops dissolving and it'll settle to the bottom because all those spaces get filled up. Well, the same with alcohol. Alcohol, the particles of alcohol are smaller than the water particles. They can, alcohol actually dissolves in water and some of it hides within those gaps. So if it is a, a true solution, a true solution meaning, means that once it's in there, it'll never fall out. If you put salt in water, a little bit of salt in water so that it's not saturated, so that the salt dissolves, it'll sit there forever and that salt will stay dissolved in that water and it will not fall out unless you do something like heat it or shake it or some something to stimulate that salt to fall to the bottom. So if it is a true solution, it is, volume is definitely not added yet. Now there's something called a suspension. which many of your medications that are in liquid form are a suspension rather than a solution. A susp anything basically if it says on the label shake well, that's usually a suspension and not a solution. Um, what that means is over time it will settle out. Um, even a suspension will do this to some extent, but not nearly as extreme. I mean, there is a certain amount of salt you can add to water and it will not increase the volume at all. A suspension will always increase the volume, but usually not, not to, full, to the full amount. So we have to be careful with volume. Just because you add, like we said, 20 milliliters to 80 milliliters does not mean you get 100 milliliters total. What is additive, though, is weight and mass. We discussed the differences between weight and mass in the last unit and the fact that weight is actually a measure of force, uh, the force of gravity on an object and mass is a measure of the amount of matter within an object and that in the standard system we tend to measure weight which is measured with pounds. Um, in the metric system we tend to measure mass which is our grams and kilograms. And there are units of mass in the standard system. Um, the unit of mass in the standard system is actually the slug. Um, many of you have probably never heard of that term, or if you have heard that term, you heard it referred to in such a way you didn't realize it was actually a unit. Um, one pound, or one slug is actually 32 pounds on Earth. So one slug of matter will weigh 32 pounds. Um, in the metric system, of course, we have the kilograms and grams are units of mass. Unit of force or weight in the metric system is a newton. Now, because gravity is constant on Earth pretty much, we tend to use mass and weight interchangeably, as we discussed. So we convert kilograms to weight, even though they're actually two different measurements. We're, we're converting a mass into to pounds, which is weight, but we still accept it. But anyway, mass and weight are additive. If we add 7 ounces to 2 ounces, we're going to get 9 ounces. Now be careful with this. 
That's ounces, not fluid ounces. Remember, a fluid ounce is a measure of volume, not weight. Volume is not necessary. A fluid ounce is defined to be the volume of one weight ounce of water. And, of course, mass is additive. If I have 70 milligrams and I add that to 130 milligrams, I do get 200 milligrams. So if I'm talking about mass or weight, it is additive. So the point of all that is looking at our concentrations. Um, our first form of a concentration is weight in weight. W slash W. That stands for weight in weight concentration. That term was much more descriptive before the medical field switched to the metric system because weight and weight, we were talking about ounces or drams in ounces and drams or grains in grains. Um, now that we've switched over to the metric system, technically it should be mass and mass because we're talking about grams and milligrams. But let's just say that we have, let's say, um, Put it this way, let's say 80 milligrams of solution contains 16 milligrams of our medication, of our serum. So that means that concentration is 16 milligrams in 80 milligrams. What is that going to be out of 100? 16 times 100 divided by 80 is 20. So that is a 20% solution. So a concentration of 20%. Let's say 32 milligrams of medication again of serum is added to 96 milligrams of NS. And for us to find the weight and weight concentration. So we have 32 milligrams into what's our total solution? So 96 milligrams of saline, but we have the 32 milligrams of medication as well. So that is going to be, just like we had to do with our dilution, 32 over 128 how much is that out of 100? Cross, multiply, and divide. That is a 25% concentration. So that is weight in weight. So we would reverse that and ask how much serum or how much medication is in 60 milligrams of a 30% weight and weight concentrated solution. So 30% is 30 out of 100. The 60 milligrams represents the total solution. So that's going to go on bottom. Cross multiply and divide. 30 times 60 is 1,800 divided by 100. That's 18 milligrams of serum, of medication.
So let's say a patient is prescribed fifty one milligrams of medication. How much of a thirty percent weight and weight solution? should be administered. So this is just kind of the opposite of the last problem. It's a 30%, so it's 30 out of 100. But now we have 51 milligrams of the medication is what's desired. So that goes on top. And we want to know how much total solution needs to be administered to get that 51 milligrams. So 100 times 51 divided by 30 is... 170 milligrams. So now in these last two problems, does everybody see where the 18 milligrams and the 170 milligrams are coming from once the problem is set up? Everybody's okay with the cross, multiply, and divide? Okay. So in the next question, does everybody see why we're putting the numbers where we are here? The percent, of course, 30% is always 30 over 100. But then why does the 60 go on bottom? because that is the total volume or total weight of the solution here. So that goes on bottom. Here the 51 goes on top because that's just the weight of the medication or the serum. So we had to put that on top. We were looking for the total volume. So I'm going to give you one to try in your notes. Let's do this. The doctor orders sixty four milligrams of medication. How much of a sixteen percent? Solution. It's a weight and weight solution. Should be given again. See if you can figure that one out. I'll give you a minute. So, 16%. 16 out of 100. Where does the 64 go? Top or bottom? It goes on top. 64 milligrams. So we will cross multiply and divide, and what do we get down here? 400 milligrams. So any questions on that? Okay. So our next step is to deal with called a volume in volume solution. This is a little trickier because we cannot assume that they are additive. As we said, volume and volume is not necessarily additive. So when we deal with a volume and volume solution, we have to be talking about the volume of the serum and the total volume. For example, um, well, let's just do this. If we have 8 milliliters of serum in 40 milliliters of total solution. The concentration is going to be 8 milliliters in 40 milliliters how much is that out of 100? So we're going to cross multiply and divide 8 times 100 is 800 divided by 40 is 20. So that is a 20% 20 out of 100 is 20%. So 20% concentration. If we were trying to constitute that solution, and we put 
8 milliliters of serum into a container, into whatever we're going to use to measure it with. Would we add 32 milliliters of saline? Not necessarily, because volume is not added in. What we would have to do is we know we want 40 milliliters total volume here. We would just keep adding saline until we got up to that point. Um, most likely more, well, not most likely, it would definitely be more than 32 milliliters total added. So when we're talking about volume and volume, we cannot take the amount of medication plus a certain amount of saline and say that that's the total volume because it just doesn't work that way. Bless you. But it does still work that we can find our amount of medication from the total volume if we know the percent. So if we uh, have a doctor that orders, oh, let's see here. Five hundred milligrams of a medication. How much twenty five percent volume and volume solution? Oops, that should be milligrams, that should be milliliters, sorry. Doctor orders five hundred milliliters of medication. How much of a twenty five percent volume and volume solution should be given? Well, it's 25%, so that is 25 over 100. The 500 milliliters represents the medication. Does that go on top or bottom? That goes on top. So we will cross, multiply, and divide. 100 times 500 is 50,000. Divided by 25 is going to be 2,000 milliliters of medication to administer. Questions? Sure. Yep. Yep. No, because what we're finding is the amount. So the amount that is given is in there's it's a weight in weight solution. So the weight is gonna there's gonna be a weight on top and the bottom will also be a weight. So it's milligrams over milligrams. The only percent here is the 16% over, of course that would be a hundred percent. When it's a weight and weight solution, the weight is always over another weight. Just like this one up here, it was 51 milligrams over 170 milligrams. You still are confused. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. That would be just like asking how much morphine should be given. The 16% is just the name of the solution. You know, that's the type of solution being given. But the amount is still going to be in milligrams. Just like with this example here, it's a 25% solution. But since it's volume and volume, the amount of it we give is still measured in milliliters. Okay, does that help at all? Okay. So let's look at the doctor administers eight hundred milliliters of a thirteen percent volume and volume solution.
how much medication did the patient receive? So again, this is 13%, so it's 13 out of 100. The 800 is the amount of medication or the total amount of solution? Total amount of solution. So the 800 milliliters goes on bottom. So we're going to find out how much medication they received. That's going to be in milliliters too. So 13 times 800 divided by 100 is 104. There's 104 milliliters of medication in that 800 milliliters of 13% solution. I'm going to have you guys try one on your own. Doctor orders 75 milliliters of medication. How much 15% solution needs to be given to the patient? I'll pause for a second. So, 15% solution. So 15 out of 100. 75 milliliters, top or bottom? Top, it's the amount of medication, so it goes on top. The amount of solution is going to be on bottom. We cross, multiply, and divide. 100 times 75 divided by 15 will give us 500 milliliters. So you would administer 500 milliliters of solution. Okay, the third type of concentration we have is a little bit tougher to deal with, and that is a weight in volume solution. Now, weight and volume, what we tend to do, rather than doing weight to total volume, we do weight to volume of whatever our solvent is. Generally, because a, 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 weight, and a weight and volume solution is going to be totally dissolved, so it won't increase the volume of the solution. So we're looking at the weight... in grams over the volume in milliliters. The reason for this, if you recall back to when you were talking about the metric system, one milliliter is defined to be, I'm sorry, not one milliliter, but one gram is defined to be the mass of one milliliter of water. And most of our liquids are close to the, the density of water. Um, of course, you know, normal saline or neutral solution is the density of water. So one milliliter of NS is going to be one gram. So if we have eight grams of medication and usually this is only for dry medication dissolved into a liquid of some sort of powdered medication into a liquid so eight grams of medication dissolved into 200 milliliters of NS of solution Find the concentration. Well, this is 8 grams in 200 milliliters. And since it is grams in milliliters, we can do our weight and volume solution. So 8 times 100 divided by 200 is going to give us 4 out of 100, or a 4% weight and volume concentration.
So if 20 milligrams of medication are dissolved into 50 milliliters of solution, find the concentration. I'm going to have you try that in your notes card. How many of you came up with 40%? Good. I'm glad nobody raised their hands. Because we can't use 20 milligrams, we have to convert that to 0 0.02 grams. So remember, weight and volume concentration is grams per milliliter. So now it's going to be 0 0.02 grams over 50 milliliters equals how much out of 100? So 0 0.02 times 100 divided by 50 is going to be 4. That is a 4% solution. Okay, it is time for our break. So let's go ahead and take our break. We'll start lecturing again at 1130.